Today's education topic is phosphorus. And I know immediately you want to go to next because nobody cares about phosphorus <laughs> except for the dietitians. And we love the dietitians for that reason because when we have patients high in phosphorus, they will give us the recommendations and they will help us. So whatever clinic you're at, if you're struggling with a patient with high phosphorus, ask for your dietitian's help. But Getting dialysis patients to care about high phosphorus levels is a challenge. It's a challenge for the doctor, for the nurse, for the nurse practitioner, and the dietitian, for everybody. And, and I can understand why, because a patient that has a high phosphorus level, they feel fine. There's no like immediate side effects of a high phosphorus level. Um, sometimes they get itchy, they have a lot of itchiness, but even people with normal phosphorus levels on dialysis have itchy, dry skin. So it's kind of like, is it really, it, it will help to have a normal phosphorus level, but sometimes that's not enough of a motivator for our patients. The other thing about phosphorus is it's found in a lot of our foods. It's used as a preservative. So it's hard to avoid it. And they're already limited on the foods that they can eat. And now we're telling them like, watch out for your, those phosphorus foods because long-term it's gonna get you. Like they're like, long-term what like why do why do i care about this i need to eat something like let me eat something like high fat there's high phosphorus in cheese dark sodas certain chocolates like all of my favorite foods so then you tell me that i can't have that like i would be like too bad but with the right education I might care as a dialysis patient. It has been my experience that one of the secrets to long-term success of dialysis patients, like success being defined as less hospitalizations, less mortality, less amputations of toes, fingers, feet, hands, better cardiac health, is keeping that phosphorus at a healthy level, maintaining that phosphorus at 5.5 or below. And that number comes from a lot of research from the National Kidney Foundation, and that is the goal that is provided dialysis clinics by CMS. So that's like a whole nother thing, but that comes from data. The data shows that dialysis patients have better outcomes with a phosphorus of 5.5 or less. Fun, right? Cool, like, oh my gosh. So long-term, what does phosphorus do long-term? Cause I already said that like phosphorus doesn't do a lot short term. So long term, what is it going to do? I'm going to get a little complicated, but I'm going to keep it fun. So I have healthy kidneys. I'm going to eat cheese, drink dark soda, have chocolate, and my phosphorus levels in my blood are going to go up. And my kidneys are like, all good, Lindsay. Let's get rid of it through the kidney and you'll urinate it out. No problem. But the patient on dialysis will have the cheese and the chocolate and the dark soda and their kidneys are like, I don't know, I can't handle this phosphorus anymore. You gotta keep it, all right? So I'm keeping it in my bloodstream. And my body's, the rest of my body's like, this phosphorus is too high. Like this is, we can't keep this here. Like we need to get rid of it. And they have a backup plan. You know, we all have like a backup plan. So phosphorus is going to go up. And guess who loves phosphorus? Calcium. Blood serum calcium loves phosphorus and they come, they bind together, they, they form the calcium phosphorus product and then it kind of deposits itself in the vessels at some point. It just kind of builds up in the vessels and it causes hardening of the vessels and like thickening. So then, you know, where they used to be like this, all of a sudden like they're like this and there's less, and there's less circulation and it can also deposit in the like vessels of the heart causing hardening of that too. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. And it gets, it gets even deeper. It gets even more complicated than that. So now we have high phosphorus, calcium's binding. So now all of a sudden we have, so we have less phosphorus, but we also have less calcium. And the body's like, oh my God, I need more calcium. My blood calcium is dropping. And if, I, if you have a low, one of the symptoms of a low serum, a calcium level is weak muscles. People coming in just feeling weak might want to check their calcium. So the body tries to fix that. The body's like, oh, big whoop, big whoop. I've got so much backed up calcium. Like, I know, I know, I know where to get it. Like, well, well let me be right back with some calcium. Where, where do we have all this calcium? Where do we have it? <laughs> the bones. Oh my God, the bones. Takes it from the bones. Long term, you're gonna end up with weak bones. Like I have seen people with who have cramped so hard that they crack a rib. Okay, so long term, the high phosphorus is a big deal. We can see that now. So now we have to like 
uncomplicate it and tell it to our patients so that they care. What, so one of the other things that happens with this low circulation are like wounds, like like necrotic wounds, gangrene, and it, they're hard to heal, which leads to amputation. So um, we have done education at our clinic where we show them the wounds that can happen. And we've had patients with necrotic wounds and they've been like, gosh, you know, they're like, I went and it's painful, like it hurts. And we've had patients that like, are like, oh, I wish I would have cared more about this. I wish I would have done my phosphorus binder. So like, please learn from them. So, okay, so I have all of these problems. I have all of these problems, but we've got a solution. The solution, obviously one is diet, but the second one, because it is impossible to avoid phosphorus in foods is a pill, of course. And we call it a phosphorus binder. Phoslo or calcium acetate, Renvella, Civellimer, uh, there's a few other ones out there that are going to bind to the phosphorus in the food. So the number one thing to remember with phosphorus binders is that they need to be taken with first bites of food. Too soon or too far after, it's like putting the money in the drain. Like it's not going to work. So if you take that binder with the first bites of food, it's going to bind with the phosphorus in your food and then excrete it uh, through a bowel movement. It's like, huh, what a simple solution like why doesn't everybody do that it seems easy and some of it sometimes the binders are expensive okay and they've already had a they already have a high pill burden and a high like pill burden as it relates to cost of the medications and then also uh, you know they're called binders it's a twofer you know it's kind of an inside joke these binders they bind to phosphorus but they also tend to bind up the dialysis patient and i don't care if you're old or young Nobody likes to be constipated. So that is um, an education thing where you need, to, where they might need to, you know, have something to help with that constipation. And other people, they also have diarrhea. So it is, it sounds like a very simple pill to take, but you have to have buy-in from the patient that it's worth it long-term for them to consistently take it. There are a handful of patients where it is, it's, it's too much. It's, it's uncomfortable, but all we can do is educate. Um, so they can make informed decisions on their health care. That is, that's one of my jobs as a nurse, and I'm I'm grateful for that. I love talking about it. And the other thing that I'll do is I need to document this education. Well, documentation is very important. Medications to keep in mind that you might give as a dialysis nurse to prevent these complications will be like Zemplar or a form of vitamin D that's going to help absorb calcium from the gut instead of from the bones. Other ones that you might see patients take are uh, Sensipar or Parsibiv. They're on one or the other. They're never on both of those, never on both of those. And, um, I have a few other videos that talk more about that and I will include the links here. And thank you guys so much for watching.